Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Foods and Ends Limited Q4 FY24 earnings conference call. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company, which are based on the beliefs, opinions, and expectations of the company as on the date of this particular conference. These statements are not guaranteed for future performance and involve risks and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation oh. concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Milan Dalal, the Managing Director. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, greetings to my fellow shareholders, analysts, well-wishers, and prospective shareholders. Uh, my team, led by Mulai Saha, our CEO, and Mr. Anand Krishnan, our CFO, are on the call and will elaborate further on the performance. What I would like to specifically mention is a significant event since the last call. Uh, one of my uh, co-directors of the board, Mr. Raymond Simpkins, uh, was also being a shareholder holding over about 11% shares for uh, almost over a decade or more, uh, had decided, uh, desired to join me as a co-promoter uh, since the reclassification of the ex-promoter happened. Uh, I believed it to be a good move and in, in the interest of the company and its future, uh, especially because of the wide experience that uh, Mr. Raymond Simpkins has uh, and uh, with his connects internationally, uh, we thought it would be a, a very good move and that uh, I have signed up a shareholders agreement which as a consequence of that has uh, triggered an open offer and the same is under, currently underway and uh, we should be able to know uh, its results in the near future. Having said that, uh, at the, that Mr. Raymond Simpkins has already vigorously started his uh, efforts by giving us the right introduction and connects internationally and uh, one of our products, uh, the, in the tomato pulp range, uh, we shall be launching in our own brand sometime uh, end of this quarter or early next quarter in Hong Kong. Uh, this is a test case scenario and we expect it to replicate the same in many other regions where he operates. Uh, with this, I will now open up the call for questions for my team and me uh, as required to be answered. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We will now begin the question answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have the first question from the line of Ravi Agarwal from Agarwal Investments. Please go ahead. Am I audible, sir? Uh, yes, we can hear you, Ravi. Okay. Uh, so my question is uh, regarding the packing project. I asked in uh, quarter two, you say project will be started on 22nd of November. So what type of hurdles we uh, see in the project to actually start this in 20, uh, FY25? You are correct. Uh, I think uh, we have communicated that in the month of November, uh, uh, 15 project likely to start. Uh, however, we could not uh, complete the entire commercial run, I mean sorry, entire operation by November. We have the entire operation is completed by March and now since it's a seasonal product in nature because 
it will be getting to be produced from the mango peel so it commercial production though it started in the month of march but now it's likely to be uh, fully operational from this month end or uh, early june because we need to have the mangoes to run the facility uh, sir what type of our tomato processing business as we uh, done with uh, dp iit dp iit i at the name of the organization government organization we are not doing with any dp iit Uh, any tomato processing business uh, that you have started means uh, as a, I, uh, we have our own facility tomato and we are selling in the open market. We have no tie up with any government or anything. Okay, okay, okay. And uh, sir, as you told us, uh, some uh, active uh, uh, for big brand B two B and uh, leave to the revenue is very co packing with or their behalf. I mean what? There's some disturbance here too, properly. Can you repeat, please? Yes, sir. In quarter two, you told that uh, you have some active uh, uh, conversation with some big brand for B two B business and uh, believe to be a uh, big revenue in January co packing on their behalf. Yes, uh, there are two things. Uh, the big brand which you are talking about is for the trade line plan. As well as from the Tetra Dicard facility, both Tetra and plant. Uh, finally, uh, after the audit, we are able to start uh, the co-packing with the big brands. The quarter four, we are able to do around 50 metric ton of co-packing for some brands and uh, two brands basically, and further order received for this financial year. For the Tetra Dicard. Uh -huh. Or for the round with a couple of brands, uh, though we are not able to close any deal as of now with these two brands uh, because there are a lot of R and D work is going on on the recipe side and uh, a lot of sampling process is going on. Uh, it, uh, we are whatever we have anticipated that we can close. I think um, the timeline is taking more than what we targeted. That is the reason. Uh, but uh, we hope. Uh, very soon we will be likely to close this co-branding with couple of. However, in the Tetra Dicard we are uh, uh, launching our new pro our products uh, own brand product, which is one of the mango products which is launched last year. We got a good response, uh, and then we have uh, further uh, we have uh, changed some recipe on this mango product, and this from July onward uh, our new product will be in the market. Uh, hello, am I audible now? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, Mr. Ravi Agarwal, your DP uh, tomato processing line, I present with DP IIT to put up a tomato processing line. There is no incentive that we are actually getting under this. It's, the project is already underway, and uh, we have almost finished the capex uh, for that particular line in Gonde facility of Nasik of Palace and such. So, I mean, I think that was the question that he was actually referring to with uh, DP IIT. That's the one. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. And uh, sir, one last question. Uh, uh, I have seen in your presentation that we received 25.4 crore in uh, in as a PLI income incentive. If you see this financial year. Yes. yes. And uh, sir, what type of product actually we launch in Hong Kong uh, market? The last question from my. There are lot of disturbance. Uh, Mr. Ravi, Mr. Ravi. So, uh, with respect to the PLI as of now, uh, I mean, with respect to the Hong Kong market and what we are doing out here, I have no relevance. But uh, generally, there are two categories in which we are actually getting PLI incentives. One is category one for things that we have actually done. Uh, if we feel incentives, so the incentives are 25.4 crores with, with uh, respect sorry to, to interrupt you, the Mr. growth uh, that we have done. The is not very clear from your line, Mr. Pristan. If you could speak a little closer to the microphone. Okay, yes. am I clear now? Uh, yes, this is a little better. Okay, so I was just saying that uh, the incentives that we get under the PLI is basically uh, under two categories. That is category one and category three. Category one refers to the Uh, the capex that we have done and the sales growth that we need to achieve, 
over a period of six years so that we can actually achieve around 145 crores of incentives. And other 2.7 crores of incentives is under category three, which is for uh, export of goods, uh, of branded goods outside India. So uh, whatever we are doing in uh, Hong Kong, we might be able to get something uh, based on uh, the export of, uh, uh, I mean, the under category three for export as such. But apart from that, uh, there are no other incentives uh, or no tie-ups that we can actually do with uh, Hong Kong uh, to get additional incentives. Okay, thank you from my side and all the best for the future, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question on the line of Shalini Gupta from East India Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir. I had two questions. First is that with the last conference call, you were very bullish about the uh, about about the business. You were you were you were you were talking about big numbers, and now this quarter we see those numbers have not come through. So my question is, what has changed? Is it that the uh, that the overall demand has been very poor? If you could comment on this. Anand, will you take it over? Uh, I couldn't hear the question. Can you please repeat? Uh, what she's trying to say, okay, I'll take it over. Uh, uh, what, as Anand, you can also talk, so what she's trying to say that last time when we spoke, we have talked about a good quarter in Q4 should be a good, I think, which is correct. And, but she is telling that our quarter 4 is not so good, whatever we have anticipated or informed. I think we have a good volume growth of 20% plus, Anand, correct? Correct. Uh, so suddenly the 20% volume growth has actually come in. So if you actually see our investor presentation and the con calls that we have actually been having, we have actually told you that at the beginning of the season, we had actually contracted and uh, booked orders for 40% more than what we actually did in FI23. So we had produced accordingly and the call-offs actually happened over a period of 15 to 16 months. So Q4 sorry, sorry, I can't volume growth. that said. Hello? Yes, I couldn't catch that. Can you please repeat? I'm saying, uh, if you actually have referred to our previous investor conference calls and the investor presentations that we have put up, we mentioned that we had almost a 40% order book growth over uh, the previous year, that of FY23. And with respect to that, we, have pro we had produced accordingly. The sales fall off in the first Q3, Q1, Q2, and Q3 was... Uh, lower than what we actually expected. Q4 actually saw a y, a y on Y jump of 20 or percent. And as we speak in Q1, FI25, the volume growth is much higher than 20 percent as we speak as such. So uh, we are in line with whatever commitments that we had given. And uh, if you have any further questions, happy to answer. Yes, I mean, Lena, when do we see that in the in the in the profit and loss stop line sales revenue figure? Because you're saying the volume has been very good, but you then obviously the realization has been very poor. So, I mean, if you could just talk about when, as investors, we see, see it in, in the profit and loss account. Shalidi, so one more thing that we have repeatedly told in all of all of our conference calls is that uh, our top line is a function of the raw material price. So the raw material and obviously has to come down irrespective of how much uh, the volume growth is. Obviously, at some point of time, if the volume growth is higher, then uh, the sales uh, top line has to grow. But then it's a pass-on that we actually have, which is a risk-free model that we have. So uh, uh, the gross margin per kg is what we actually try and improve over a period of time on a year-on-year -year basis, and that's something that we've actually done. So I'm surprised that you have put up this question. No, so so basically you're saying that realizations have come down during the quarter. Is that what you're saying? The realization comes down when the raw material price comes down. So in yes. 2023, the raw material price came down because of which the sales price comes down. But the sales price does not have any function with respect to the gross margin per kg. No, that, that, much, that much I understand. But in, in, in the fourth quarter of financial year 24, did the sales price come down that, that we've seen such poor top line growth? So Q4 of FY23, the, uh, the raw material so price FY24. So Q4 of FY24, the raw material price was low because the inventory season 23, the raw material price has come down. So well, when do you expect the, expect the raw material price to move up? It is not a season. Oh. 
Madam, we are we are dealing in agricultural product. It's not in our hands. It's not in our control. It's so it typically depends on how the crop situation. If it's a surplus crop, automatically raw material price will go down. If there is a stress in the availability of the crop, raw material price will go up. So, being an agricultural commodity, these are the uncertainties always there in our raw material price. And accordingly, what is our model is that cost plus model. So, to reduce the risk on the raw material volatility, is a cost plus model industry works where we can pass on the entire volatility of the raw material to our client, and we work on the fixed uh, price, uh, fixed margin to help or to improve our gross margin. What Alan just now communicated to you. No, but uh, but you you would have an estimate because you are in the market for so long. So do you estimate that prices will go up or the prices will remain remain low? Yeah, Madam, tell me all that I can say. Madam, the lies that currently this year the prices are showing higher. But what are the reasons? The heat wave is tremendous. What will happen? The chances of not getting enough raw materials can be there. What can happen is that it can rain and they expect it to rain. Again, the prices can stabilize. But overall, uh, a guidance that can be against uh, that against the previous year's raw material cost. This year, we are seeing a higher raw material cost. Uh, this year, you are seeing a higher raw material cost, but lesser lesser realization in the profit and loss account. Is that correct? No. If the realization will be high. Okay, I'll take this question offline. And my second question is: When does the when does the uh, the, uh, the the when does that end? The 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 open offer. When does the open offer end? Uh, I think the offer dates so are we are just awaiting the CB approval, but uh, it's expected to open up in the first week of uh, June, and that by the third week of uh, June it should end. So uh, it's there as per the public announcement. Uh, those dates are there, but we're just waiting for the CB approval to come through. Okay, but sir, I just wanted to understand. On what basis you gave an open offer price of 147? Because at the time you announced the open offer price was ruling much higher at around 170 odd. So on what basis did you did you arrive at this open offer price? Uh, for waiting me or this company, no individual has got his right at his whims and fancies to come up with a price. It's a, a city regulated price, and the merchant banker verifies. And uh, uh, it's slightly incorrect. The date was announced uh, just prior to that. The prices were lower, and it's only after the announcement that it came up. But uh, the SEBI formula rate came to 146 and some odd amount, and it's always advisable to do a round figure. So in fact, uh, we are slightly higher than the uh, the SEBI formula. So uh, it is on that basis that the pricing is announced. Okay, thank you. That's all to my end. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question on the line of Anuj Jain from an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Am I audible? Uh, yes, sir. Your audio is a little low. If you could go off the mic, if you could go off the speakerphone and go on on the microphone once. Uh, hello. Um, It's hello. too muffled a bit. Uh, Hello. Yes, you need. Hello, to... alert. Ah, yes. Uh, yes, sir, I'm audible. Yes. Your voice is low. Um, uh, is it still now? It is still low. Yes, you need to go off the uh, speaker phone, please, or the handset. Uh, yeah. Using. Come on, speak directly from the phone. Yeah, yeah, I'm speaking directly from the phone. Hello. Uh, is the management able to hear Anuj? Yes, we can. We can. Okay. All right, Anuj, you uh, go ahead. So, good afternoon, sir. Uh, I had a couple of questions. So my first question is, uh, what is the quantity and value of uh, uh, you know uh, outsourced inventory as of March 24, and what is the targeted production of in-house and outsourced? So uh, we don't like to give this uh, breakup 
uh, in a public conference call because these are certain things that uh, are private to the company and uh, is sensitive with respect to what we share as data to the competition. So, uh, given that the uh, uh, statement, I'd like just like to tell you that every season we keep on adding processes outside, and we have also added capacities inside. Uh, I mean, in house as such. So, uh, uh, we wouldn't be able to give you the exact mix of the thing. Uh, okay, sir. And uh, is there a ballpark number of how much quantity is committed by major customers? So, the order book for FI twenty five is just started building. and uh, by end of uh, july is when we would actually get a better idea when where we exactly stand for this particular season okay i just would like to add one point uh, we as a company for any type of crop whatever we are processing we all the year we you we process from day 1 till day end objective is to cover maximum volume and once you have a coverage then we go to the market uh, there are some fixed contracts fixed contract in the sense that customer profile are fixed who are taking from us since three decades so first we allocate the such customer and then whatever additional stock is at all available then we go to the open market uh, based on the demand supply so for us order books is not a challenge challenge is procurement processing because being agricultural commodities there is lots of ifs and buts on the top availability and price so that's the only challenge we face so customer profile order book is the least problem for us okay thank you so much sir that was also my thank you <coughs> thank you We have the next question line of Mani Segal, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening, sir. Just a couple of questions. One, of course, you mentioned that you've been processed. You've processed 40% more volume, whereas we sold broadly same as last year, which means that that extra 40% volume will come through this financial year. Correct. Uh, That's right. Rightly so, because uh, order, oh, whatever we produce, we produce against the confirmed order. and since the indian beverage industry is not uh, performed what they have anticipated so there is a growth so hence there is a carry forward of the stock so this stock is likely to move in this quarter I mean, the maximum is in this quarter and followed by next quarter you are correct the whatever stocks you are holding it will be sold in this year on correct secondly uh, given this we are holding the stock so we have had finance cost related to that which is doubled over the previous year same quarter uh, which means that this cost will also be paid by the customer eventually which will also uh, so show when the this thing is sold right yeah we have a cost plus model and uh, during the price the finalization uh, we consider um, uh, 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 what is called the average holding period if the average holding period is valid then definitely we are entitled to claim uh holding period cost from the customer so if is a significant uh, variance yes customer we generally get but if it's within the controllable then we may not get it for for this year year we are expecting that there will be a additional uh, price revision or uh, sorry price revision uh, upward price revision toward for the holding period cost so looking at these two parameters at least for q1 and q2 we can say that our performance will be much much better than uh, first half of last year uh to manish uh, as of now yes uh, i think whatever we had targeted uh, it's moving accordingly but q2 is too early to comment at this stage because it depends on many other factors q2 uh, generally uh, whatever production will be doing now uh, part of the quantity is also going q2 so it depends everything uh, on how we produce for this year which is okay as of uh, having said that that 40% extra itself will add a lot in the first half right yeah so like that's it first quarter what we anticipated is as of now it is moving in that direction so uh, i mean in previous question i had just highlighted that uh, in q1 uh, of s25 as we speak uh, the volume growth is much higher than 20 20% that we had actually seen in uh, q4 of s24 so uh, that would just be an indication of what we are doing in q1 
no understood understood i understood uh, but of course i mean if we are saying that we made for 40% higher last year and sold only uh, same of previous year correct which means 40% correct. from carried over from last year and perhaps this year which if even if it is equal to last year will be much higher than the fy22 perfect. 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 perfect correct perfect yeah thank you so much sir thank you sir thank you we have the next question from the line of sham garg an individual investor please go ahead <clears throat> thank you for the opportunity uh, sir uh, my first question is with respect to the uh, confinement that we uh, confinement of canned tomato that we sent to hong kong what is the approx value of that uh, confinement and what are realization that you are expecting from it and what in how much period uh it is uh, we are launching our own product in hong kong and can category i mean can tomato category which is rightly said uh it's uh, may not be a right time to indicate what will be the likely volume but there is no period it's uh, endless I means if it's a good success i'm sure volume is likely to grow every year every quarter but so far uh, we have uh, given i mean already dispatched around 20 metric tons of product which is value around uh, 35000 us dollar and uh, i believe that next month to be followed one more similar load so like that it will likely to increase as you know this is a first launch so it will take time market to understand the product market to accept the product and once uh, we have done a thorough market study so we are quite confident and we are associated uh, with a very established um, uh, distributor company which is basically mr raymond simkins who is uh, joining us as a, a co promoter uh, his uh, group gates corporation they are uh, a big distributor in hong kong since more than 40 years i believe so we are in a good hands and we are in a good position we are quite bullish that we will be able to introduce few more products in that market and let me add that to be stuck to the competition of uh, chinese products and uh, uh, hong kong has its own proximity to china but we have uh, kind of passed the parameters of the quality color uh, taste everything so it's a matter of uh, time to really see the success of the team in fact i would like to add one more we as indian is very proud the reason is that as he, mr milan told that hong kong market is tomato product is 99% from chinese origin so we were targeting to enter this market more than one year or maybe i think 18 months and finally we succeed to uh, overcome all the challenges on the test profile on price on many other factors so we are very happy i mean indian tomato will be now available in hong kong that's what i'd like to highlight also mr yes. sham uh, this is one of the synergistic benefits that the uh, i mean a uh, new onboarding promoter actually gets on board basically because uh, he has his distribution network already present in hong kong which is actually helping us uh, pass through those markets as such okay that's helpful sir and my next question is respect to uh, what are the steps you are taking to tap the market of mbs and everest uh, since we have been banned uh, for a while uh, are we taking any aggressive steps to cater to that market uh, and i i can you follow i could not follow uh, yeah i i could hear the question uh, so he is actually asking about how we are actually taking steps to actually Uh, uh get into the market uh, that were uh, uh, vacated by mdh and everest because of the controversy which was there just recently so uh, just to make matters clear uh, we have one of the spices which actually does not have the eto treatment which uh, uh, everest and mdh do because of which uh, those uh, cancer producing elements are not there in those spices and uh, uh, i mean it's a god given opportunity for us where in even in the local market there has been some space which has been vacated by them which uh, has been uh, occupied by us in a few stores we are not as large as an everest or an mdh with respect to the distribution that we have but then uh, we have done our small we have taken our small steps that are that are actually required to get into those markets so, so what the road we see we uh, 
in spite of this year from those markets. Uh, it's having such substantial growth or uh, it's around 10, 20 percent growth. How do we see it? Uh, just a second. Uh, the other promoters line is uh, dropped. Uh, so, Mike, are you there on the call? Their line has actually dropped, is what they say. Yeah, I'm trying to connect with them back again, but uh, I can't get a response. Just back again. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, we have the management connected now, so can you hear us? Yeah. 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 Sorry. We, we, yeah. Hi, Sam. Yeah. Hi. 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 You can uh, please repeat your question. Yes. Uh, so my question is respect to what kind of growth in spices we are seeing this year, since our competitors have uh, there's a weakening strength in the market. Uh, is it 10, 20 percent of growth, or we see a substantial growth? If you can uh, quantify. Or, see a substantial growth, our targets are uh, small. Uh, as you actually saw in FY24, we actually grew from, say, 18 odd crores to uh, 24, 23, 24 odd crores in uh, Kusum. And in the next three years, our target is to, uh, the first step is to actually get to 100 crores. Okay, sir. So we can expect around the, uh, 35 to 40 crores this year? Uh, please don't ask me for numbers because that's like forward guidance and I wouldn't like to give any forward guidance on that. Okay, noted too. And uh, sir, I, if, uh, I can squeeze in uh, one more question. Uh, like sure. what is the revenue guidance for FY25 and operating margins? Uh, can we expect 1400 crores of, or 1500 or crores of revenue top line? And uh, if you can give some specification about the bottom line as well. Uh, so, Sam, uh, our top line is always a function of the raw material price. Uh, but having said that, our uh, endeavor is to actually increase the volume that we have actually sold on a year-on-year -year basis and also to increase the absolute gross margin per kg. So, uh, I mean, with respect to exact numbers, with respect to the top line, I can obviously not give you because the raw material price, the procurement is still going on in this particular season. So, it's impossible for me to give you a forward guidance on that. Is there any range if you can provide? Uh, forward guidance, definitely not. Oh, okay. So I'll, I'll join back in the queue. I'll see you more questions. Thank you so much, Sean. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. We have the next question on the line. Rahul Jain from Credence mm -hmm. Well. Please go ahead. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, uh, on the business side, uh, the previous call and uh, interaction we had mentioned that the capex which we have completed till date uh, this can actually the capacity build up at peak utilization can result in about 1700 to 1800 close of top line in next three years uh, so when we talk about 1700 1800 close three years hence the breakup between various segments how will it look like like I think Kusum we are targeting somewhere 100 crores so apart from Kusum uh, what kind of other segments will contribute at 1700-1800? The pulp will grow. We are doing a lot of other fruits and vegetables under the pulp segment. That's number one. Uh, as we told you that we have also added a capacity for tomato processing as we speak. The uh, plant is expected to uh, go on stream, I think, by Q2, FI25, is it right, MS? Yeah. Yeah, so by Q2 of FY25, we would have this additional tomato processing line in place. So uh, in FY24 itself, we had a large order which we could not take for tomato processing, which could have been to the tune of, say, 150 odd crores, which we could have done, but we didn't have the capacity for that. Mango as a product is also uh, having its own growth that we actually see in the market. Apart from this, we have actually diversified into a few other fruits and vegetables, which will also give us growth. Spray drying. As a, uh, as a product is also growing basically because of uh, the shift in demand happening from European nations, uh, Asian nations because of the energy crisis in Europe. So all these things put together uh, along with Tetra Ricard and the branded product that we have uh, will help us achieve 1800 crores easily. So Tetra Ricard could be around 100 out of that 1800? With the current capacity, yes, 100. But uh, as I told you in the previous calls, uh, 
the infrastructure is built wherein there is only one line which has been put up in the entire infrastructure space that's been created there could be five more lines which can be added in the same uh, space without much of capex except for the machinery okay and uh, just today spray dried and frozen food would be contributing what kind of sales Spray dried as of last year would have been around 22 odd crores of sales, and uh, frozen would have been 46 crores of sales. Okay, so the frozen can be in the bracket of around 100 crores in three four years. Is that all? Uh, it's going really well, and with the new capacity that we have added in uh, a Wankel in Gujarat, uh, the facility is go- doing really well, and we expect something around 150 crores uh, going. And so you just mentioned about this tomato order, which was 150 crores, because of capacity constraints you couldn't. So are we talking about an order of 150 crores, which if the capacity existed, we would have executed it in one year? Is that understanding right? Uh, that is right, but uh, last year there was another challenge as well as in an FI 24, the tomatoes which were actually available in the regions that we were present in uh, were not of great quality, which we couldn't process more. So, assuming there is enough for decent raw material availability and the capacity comes on stream, we can definitely get to 150 crores. Sure. And sir, margins in spray diet, frozen foods, kusum spices, etc. Uh, is are these margins in this segment higher than the company level margins yes so the increasing contribution could lead to an increase in the margins coming because of this product mix change or the segmental change mix change correct correct but i would always urge you to look at my company as an absolute a bit of growth that we actually do rather than a, a margin percentage because as i've explained uh, Uh, time in again on this call and in the previous call that our EBITDA margins, our gross margin percentage is always a function of the raw material price because we play very safe with respect to passing on the prices in our B2B business. Sure. So last three years we have done very well. Or I would put it five years also from March 20 onwards till 24. Our EBITDA has gone up from about or I would put that from March 14 till almost March 20 we were in the bracket of 25 30 crores. uh but in last 3 4 years now we are coming to around 120 crores of ebitda and what i based on the numbers of volumes uh the ebitda per ton is somewhere around 12000 and uh, the gross margin per ton is roughly around 30000 uh so and we have always mentioned that we should be looking at a company more in terms of gross margin or ebitda per kg rather than a percentage basis so my question is first of all am i somewhere near the numbers which are there which exist and going forward what is the scope or what could drive this per kg ebitda or gross margins to move up okay now this is a good question but uh, uh, what we have also explained in a previous call is that uh, generally the ebitda for us is based on the product mix so uh, when you are actually seeing only uh, the tonnage which is actually given in the investor presentation it's the tonnage of all the products that we are actually putting up whether it is uh, uh, mango inside mango there are different varieties of mango say alfonso totapuri kesar neelam and all those things so uh. the amount the prices uh, and the realization will depend upon the kind of uh, mango that we sell say alfonso has a higher realization than totapuri and neelam sure. has a slightly lesser realization than totapuri as well so it depends upon the uh, blend as well so for you to actually see it on a uh, on, on on that basis which is actually put up on the industry presentation is not the right way no no i do understand but frankly speaking on overall basis our ebitda per ton has moved up from around 6000 to 12000 in 4 5 years your gross has moved up from about 25000 to 30000 it has moved up so probably it is due to the product mix change so typically right. when we look ahead for next 3 4 years what is the scope for this to go up further and will that be driven by only product mix change or something else so we would always on a season basis each and every basically say totapuri if my say example gross margin uh, per kg last year was 7 rupees next year would be at least 7.2 rupees 7.3 rupees is what we actually do so the product mix and the per kg relation that we actually fix with our uh, uh, customers on a year on year basis based on the raw material prices would actually contribute to this so 
sir, uh, with regards to the taxation, uh, you mm-hmm. have mentioned in your presentation about the taxation, but if you could explain this uh, more in detail because I am not able to comprehend this properly. And also, uh, going ahead, is this just a one-off tax which has come in and in future, what will be the tax bracket? Sure. So the tax bracket for us has now actually shifted from uh, 25% to 30% plus the other uh, uh, charges which are there. So uh, we fall at 34 point uh, some odd percent as, as we speak. Uh, the, the reason for that is that we have actually increased our turnover from 400 odd crores as of FY22. So uh, because of that, uh, we have actually moved on to the higher tax bracket. That has been one contributor to the higher tax that we have actually paid. Second contributor to the tax is basically because we had actually given some ICDs to our associate company, which is called, which was called as Tri Global Foods Limited, uh, in which we had tried to brand. Uh, I mean, uh, they had their own brand, and we were actually giving them some monetary support as well as some uh, materials to actually further uh, the consumer division of theirs as such. Uh, unfortunately, during COVID, they did not do well, and uh, as of now, we, we have actually taken a stance that we might not be able to recover what we had actually given them. So we had written off around 2.7 crores of uh, uh, ICDs over and above uh, whatever provisions that we had previously made. Now there are no more provisions that needs to be made for this particular uh, company, and we have written off the entire thing. In view of that, uh, there is a particular section called as Section 194R. Uh, of TDS, wherein, uh, uh, I mean, if you have to claim benefit under that, you'll have to actually pay, pay TDS to that particular company, and then the company will get benefit, and then you get a right of here. So rather than doing all those things, we just said that, okay, we are not going to claim any tax benefit as of now, as in when the clarity evolves around Section 194R, we will come back to claim this benefit. So both these things have actually contributed to our, uh, uh, the optical illusion of uh, the tax rate being higher. Uh, uh, the so other part with respect to the tax rate actually being higher from moving from 25 to 30 percent has happened for the company because of our turnover. So going ahead, the normal tax bracket would be 35 percent, 34.94. Correct, correct, correct. That's right. So that will be your normal tax bracket. And with regards to this one-off, that is completely done away with. So no more with that is one-off. Okay. Okay. Sure. Uh, no one well, uh, expected with respect to uh, the TGFL that Tri Global Food Limited. Everything has been written now. Okay. And one last bit, sir. Uh, you mentioned in one of the previous participants that growing our business is from a customer point of view, demand is there. Uh, so it is only procurement of the fruits which basically determines what kind of uh, business you do or what kind of sales you generate in a year? There are two things. Uh, one, we have a customer stickiness because of which these customers come back to us on a year and year basis since we have been operating with them since more than 30, 40 years as such. Uh, okay. The second part of it is with respect to the stickiness that we actually have from our vendors, wherein a lot of our competitors have actually not uh, been in great uh, shape because of their personal uh, problems uh, in the other parts of their business as such. Because of which there is a lot of uh, third generation and fourth generation uh, farmers who still supply to us and they give us a lot of credit. So this is what, where the moat in our business is and going forward what we are trying to do is basically build a lot on sustainability wherein uh, uh, we are trying to uh, inculcate all the sustain, uh, sustainable practices in the business and uh, uh, the circular economy requirements of the large brands with uh, the BRSR requirements which are becoming very stringent and which is uh, uh, required for the top brand globally, uh, participants like us who actually give uh, raw materials to these large brands become more important in their value chain system. So this is where the most for us is actually developing in the business as such. Well, uh, Coke and Pepsi have been our large customers and practically they take more than 50% of uh, right. tonnages. So, uh, and these are customers which have been there with you for you know a long, long time. And in the previous interaction, management you people had did hinted that some of the large corporates also are planning to come into the business, which is why these existing customers probably are trying for annual contracts. So any kind of uh, communication from any new large customer, pro, sorry, prospective customer, which has come to you, whereby you need to prepare yourself, because I'm sure 
the business will flow in maybe a year ahead afterwards but somewhere those communication would start much earlier uh, there are two parts to this question one with respect to the large brand that we had mentioned reliance is already in the business as such so they had communicated with us but with respect to the pricing that they actually asked we have not been able to match the pricing that they have asked that's number one uh, uh, so this has actually played into our hands the other way around wherein uh, Coke and Pepsi actually understand that uh, a, lo a lot of raw material which is going to be available is going to be sidelined by Reliance. So they are also trying to secure their supply chain. So that is where we are benefiting as a company. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And sir, just one last question uh, with regards to the volumes. So from somewhere around 50,000 tons in March 21, to 78,000 to 1 lakh thousand, and this year we are somewhere flattish. So next three four years, uh, given your perception or understanding of the business environment, the customer feel, uh, what kind of volumes we can do for say three four years hence? Uh, Rahul, so one thing that we had indicated uh, last year itself is that our order book was higher by 40 odd percent. So we have not completed servicing that uh, order against, I mean, the uh, manufacturing that we did against the confirmed orders as such. So that will flow through in this particular year, apart from the current year order book that we will build. So uh, the current year order book, we might get a better sense by the end of July or uh, early August as such, by which time we might be able to give you a, a view as to how this year might go. No, I was talking more about the three years hence. Uh, with the existing infrastructure, your connects, your procurement processes and strategies, procurement agents, uh, typically three, four years, what kind of volumes is possible? I'm not talking about a guidance for the next one year. Sir. See, our endeavor is obviously a minimum of 20% growth in the mango business accompanied by the other product mix that we have actually given you an idea about. Uh, but it's very difficult for me to just throw up a number on the volume. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, thank you so much, sir, uh, for the detailed replies. Uh, thank, thank you so you. much and wish you all the best. Thank you so much, Rahul. Thank you. We have the next question on the line of Pawan Kumar from RT Capital. Please go ahead. <laughs> Uh, my uh, question was regarding the gross margin. It's gross. not very clear. If you could go off the speakerphone, please. Okay. Can, can you hear me now? Uh, this is much better, yes. Okay. Uh, so my question uh, was uh, speci specifically regarding this particular quarter. If I look at uh, basically the EBITDA per kg or gross margin per kg, when I take off the PLI incentives from the uh, from the reported numbers, it seems like uh, it has come down from around 11 rupees to 6.5 rupees. So, is it like uh, we are going to pass on whatever is the benefit from PLI incentives to the customers, or so what is the kind of strategy we are uh, looking forward? Uh, Mr. Pawan, uh, with respect to passing on the PLI incentives is definitely not a, a strategy because this is not an industry-wide incentive which is actually uh, something that we get, right? So uh, the industry, there are only two players in the industry who have actually benefited under the PLI. Mm -hmm. uh, unlike okay. a lot of other, hello? Yeah, 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 please, please go ahead. Yeah, unlike a lot of other schemes like the road tech scheme or the MEIS scheme, that's the merchandise export incentive scheme, it was industry-wide, right? So at that point of time, the customers actually came to the vendors and said that, boss, this is something that you're getting as benefit, so you need to pass on a part of it to us. But now, when it is not an industry-wide uh, practice, there is no passing on of benefits to them. So the, no, sir, I hope uh, that actually answers yeah. the question. Yeah. And so the thing is, uh, last quarter, gross margin per metric ton, if I take off, uh, I'm talking about XPLI benefits. Uh, right. Gross margin per metric ton last uh, last quarter was around 35 rupees. Right. Uh, so now it is around 21 rupees. So what uh, what explains this in the sense that sharp drop of around 14 to 14 in terms of gross margin per whatever you have processed in terms of volumes. When I take off the PLI. 
if I, I just explained in the previous uh, uh, call, which was actually put up in this particular call itself, that uh, uh, the product mix determines the gross margin per kg as well. So what we have sold in Q4 is uh, could have been sli slightly lower realization per kg because of the gross margins came down. Okay, but going forward, what is the kind of uh, realistic uh, expectation on gross margin KS per kg that we should have? Is it will it be more similar to Q3 or will it be more similar to Q4? What, what is the kind of expectations we should have? Uh, I, sorry, I'm over here. I just would like to highlight. I think uh, someone communicated that our EBITDA per kg this year is lower than last year, but actually it's not there. Even if you uh, exclude the um, PLI incentive, our EBITDA uh, absolute figure is around 100 crore. Last year it was also 100 odd crore, this year also 100 odd crore. And this year volume is... I am talking about uh, this specific quarter, sir. I am not talking about the entire year. Specific quarter. Okay, sorry. I am sorry. I am sorry. I am talking about <laughs> overall, overall we are... Our realization is better than last year by uh, one rupee. Yeah, yeah, that is right, sir. Uh, I fully agree with that. For, uh, but uh, my only thing was uh, what I'm trying to get the answer about is this particular quarter, why, why has the gross margin, per, I'm not even talking about the realization, <laughs> I'm just talking about gross margin, why has it dropped so sharply. And uh, the product is last year, I think, uh, uh, as uh, this particular period, I believe okay. we have sold more concentrate than puree. There are two types of product in mango. One is the mango concentrate and the mango puree. Mango okay. concentrate is having better gross margin than mango puree. So last year, okay. Mexico uh, took a major quantity of concentrate this quarter. But uh, yeah. this quarter, we have seen Mexico concentrate is much lower than last year. However, other customers, QD has increased substantially, which is helping to have a volume growth. So this type of product mix sometimes uh, give a distorted figure on the gross margin. But if we go to the product wise, then probably you will see that uh, overall gross margin per kg slightly improved than last year. Okay. Uh, uh, just, just let me uh, uh, put one more question. So it's like uh, your gross margin per kg, if I, if I look start looking from September 22 quarter, it has varied between 40 rupees and uh, the lowest has been this uh, this particular quarter 21 rupees. So, what is the realistic kind of gross margin per kg we should be looking at between 20 and 40? Well, is it the average or is it? It will be difficult to say because it's a product mix. Because if I say something, assuming some product mix, it is not going to happen. If I say uh, uniform product mix, then it may go to uh, 35 to 40 in between. If the uniformity product is not going to happen, if there is change, then the product will definitely the gross margin likely to be changed. So it's very difficult in our uh, type of uh, product category to say you okay. that this quarter, this is the right gross margin. It may not be correct to indicate from yeah. our side. And Mr. Pawan, uh, with yes. respect to the volumes that are given also includes volumes from spray drying, volumes from kusum, volumes from the other businesses that we do, right? So just to right. divide that and get a realization is not the right way to look at the business is what you've tried to time in again express on the call. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. And uh, one more uh, question that I had was uh, currently our debt levels have uh, gone up, uh, gone up a little, and even our finance costs are up. So, are we looking at uh, any kind of uh, the number in terms of uh, the upper band in terms of debt to equity, or how how are we looking at that particular element? Uh, as we stand today, I think we would have almost uh, reached to the peak levels of our debt. Uh, because uh, uh, by June end, we should have our investors' money that actually comes in in the form of equity, right? We have that warrant issue which actually happened in uh, November of 22, uh, for which the 18-month period actually uh, ends in uh, June of 2024. So having said that, unless we grow our sales drastically, we might not need more uh, amount of working capital debt. But if you see the debt which has actually risen to the level that has uh, uh, as of uh, March 31st, the major reason for that is basically we had produced 40% more 
uh, than what we actually did in FY23. But the uh, the sales that we have actually achieved till March is only what we did in FY23. So bulk of it actually stands in inventory of uh, March 24 balance sheet. I would also like to highlight one point. If our balance sheet closer date June, then we could have seen that debt level substantially reduced. Uh, but because uh, the stock which you are holding, um, substantial stock is moving now. So that is the, uh, due to this carry forward of stock, the working capital outstanding was more. Uh, but otherwise, uh, uh, there is nothing to be concerned on this particular because being a seasonal nature of business, we need to invest in three months time or during the season period and dispatch or uh, liquidate uh, the stock next 12 to 15 months time. So this is the nature of business. So we have to bear with that type of volatility. Okay. So uh, one small, small uh, extended question, sir. Uh, so if uh, I'm asking you this question because our inventory levels are high. So uh, let's say I process uh, let's say 10 kgs of uh, mango this particular uh, quarter, and I was able to sell only 8 kgs. So the 2 k the 2 kgs uh, processing cost would it come uh, into the cost uh, into the expenses items this particular quarter, or is it, will it get recorded uh, whenever that 2 kgs gets sold? It is always a matching sales to matching cost concept. Okay, you follow the index. Okay, so uh, basically you are saying uh, though we have processed 40% of uh, extra, that 40% extra cost has not been recorded as of now. No, this cannot come in the quarter when we sell that material. Okay, so got it. Sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm done. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Participants who wish to ask a question, may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. We have the next question from the line of Sham Garg, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Thanks for the follow-up. Uh, so my question uh, is... is Shyam, your audio again is uh, very muffled. If you to go off the speakerphone. Uh, is it better now? Uh, it's still sounding very distant. Uh, hello? Yes. Can you speak a little more closer to the microphone? <clears throat> okay. Uh, so my first question is with respect to the KPEX. Uh, what is the KPEX guideline for this year? Uh, so we have finished most of the KPEX except for the KPEX that needs to be done for the tomato processing line in Gundain Nasik. We should be up by Q2 of FI25. Uh, not more than 50 not crores that, is, uh, uh, that can be actually seen. Going forward, the total project cost would have been say around 25 to 30 odd crores as such. That's number one. Apart from which, we have a small uh, CPEX that we are actually doing at our uh, uh, co-packers line, which is in Ahmednagar, which is the top food processing line that we have. So again, uh, MS, you might be, uh, I mean, you might be able to give a better idea of the CPEX that we are doing there. Hello? Hello? Uh, is the manage, was the management able to hear the question? Uh, I could hear. Uh, uh, what about the others? Yeah. Hello, MS? Yes, tell me. Uh, so can you just give us some idea about the kind of capex that we are going to do in uh, the TPPL processing line apart from the tomato processing line that we are doing in Gundi? Uh, that is already done. I think 70 80% production. The total cost would be likely around 25 to 30 crore in between and uh, in March. So which one are you talking about? The tomato processing line or uh, the TPPL? Tomato processing line in Gonde. Huh. So that I've already given an idea. So with respect to TPPL, just if you could just guide us. No, we are not incurring any major cost there other than some storage activity. We need to enhance the storage activity. Otherwise, we are not doing any capex there because we have a existing line which we have transferred there to increase the capacity. Only you have to increase the storage, which will be around three to four crores. That you have not yet okay. done, you have not yet uh, done. So Mr. Sham, so the total capex that you can actually expect in FI25 should be around 25 watt crores as such. That's it, all put together. 
But Manal, uh, out of 25 watt port, I believe that uh, some product already, you know, some cost already incurred in this quarter, uh, FQ4, which is uh, in under WIP. So I right. believe the actual addition would be like 18 crore or something, should not be more than that. 17, 18. Okay, 18 crores, including the uh, ECRC in Okay, okay. So I hope, Sham, that gives you the answer for that. Yes, yes, sir. That answers my question. And so, with respect to working capital cycle, do we see any decrease in working capital employee base this year? Uh, so, I mean, uh, last year was tough for us because the call offs were lower than the production that we actually did. So we are obviously expecting that to go down this year, especially with the increased competition that uh, the brands are seeing from Reliance and uh, the Tata consumers as such. They are hoping for it. Let's hope for the best. Okay, sir. And so while we are procuring our frozen fruits or pulps from uh, satellite factories, uh, how do we, uh, just a uh, fundamental question to you, how do we procure it? Do we just for it to go there and check the quality of the product or we call the product and then we check the quality? If it's up to the mark, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll take it and uh, otherwise we'll send it back. How does it work? No. So what we do during the season time, we have our people placed in that factory and we have a few SOPs which are actually given to that particular factory uh, over a particular line which needs to be uh, produced in a particular manner following those SOPs as such. So our people ensure that all the SOPs are in place and uh, is uh, as per the customer requirements as well. And then we actually procure it as and when uh, uh, the customer demand comes in. Okay, okay. Got it, sir. That's it from my side. Thank you for answering my questions. Thank you so much, Shant. Thank you. That was the last question. I now hand it over to Mr. Anand Krishna for closing comments. Thank you so much, Mike. I want to express my gratitude to all our investors and shareholders for their continued support. Your trust in our company is invaluable and we take it seriously. We've already laid a strong foundation for sustainability and are confident in our ability to grow with sustainability at, a, at the core of all our practices. Should you need any further clarifications or would you like to know more about the company, please feel free to write to us. Thank you once again. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. On behalf of Foods and Inns Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your